You're on. Good morning. This is a public hearing of the Chatham Conservation Commission being held via remote teleconference on Wednesday, April 8th, 2020, in accordance with the provisions of the Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, the Wetlands Protection Act, and the Town of Chatham's Wetland Protection Bylaw, Chapter 272. My name is Janet Williams. I'm the chair of the Conservation Commission, and I'm opening this hearing at 9.02 a.m. Um, before we start, there are, of course, several announcements uh, I need to make. The first is the official town announcement regarding these circumstances. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, General Law Chapter 30A, Section 18, and the Governor's March 23, 2020 <clears throat> order imposing strict limitations on the number of people, that can gather in one place, this meeting of the Conservation Commission is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of any members of the public is permitted. Every effort is being made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings as provided for in the order. This is a reminder that persons who would like to listen to this meeting while in progress can do so by calling the phone-in number that will be displayed on the screen, I think. Um, the agenda and copies of all documents for review today are posted on the town website. Um, at this point, um, I'm asking that everybody please mute uh, your audio systems. Um, Callie, who has control of the platform, um, can do that automatically. Okay, that's not... <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Next are some announcements about how proceedings by the Conservation Commission will be conducted over the next month or so. As you may have heard last Friday, the legislature passed and the governor signed a, quote, act to address the challenges faced by municipal authorities resulting from the COVID-19 epidemic. The act suspended all statutory and regulatory deadlines applicable to conservation commissions. The effect for us is that during this emergency, there's no requirement that any commission take action, whether that's opening a hearing or issuing an order of conditions within 21 days. The act also provides that this suspension of deadlines will continue right in side. place. Yeah. It takes a little bit to download the app, but still it's not. Hang it's on. Not Please mute. Thank you. I'm managing it as best I can. Jen. I know, you're doing, but it's people, are, people are coming and going, so it is what it is, it's fine. Uh, the suspension of deadlines will continue in place until 45 days after the governor lifts the state of emergency order. Because of the substantial backlog of applications currently in progress and the very large number of new applications filed in past weeks, which you can tell by looking at the agenda for today, and being mindful of the rights of abutters who may be prejudiced by the commission taking action at this point the commission is going to take the following steps to schedule hearings and issue orders. First, we'll address applications according to a number of factors, including the date each was filed, the level of detail that's provided in and missing from the proposals, and the complexity of each proposal. We currently have a group of applications that are quite near to being finalized, and we are prioritizing those first. We're hoping to get most, if not all, of these completed today. After that, we'll conduct a work session next Wednesday, April 15th, to finalize and improve orders that, for cases that are closed today. Please note, however, that even when the Commission votes to approve an order of conditions, we have no control over when that order is actually issued. The Conservation Division, like all divisions within the town, is operating with minimal staff and we simply don't know when approved orders will actually be issued. That said, the requirement that wor no work be conducted until 21 days after an approved order is issued remains in effect to protect the rights of abutters. After next week, we will schedule further hearings for April 22nd, at which point we anticipate, with luck, finalizing applications that are currently open and in process and by May 15th to begin hearing new applications that were filed after March 10th. You can expect that we'll break up those new applications into groups and we will schedule them based on the factors that I listed above. 
we will be posting and, and give plenty of the notice that's required uh, before any group of, of applications is scheduled for a hearing uh, on and after May 13th. So to implement this schedule, we're going to continue right now two groups of applications, and I'm hereby exercising the authority that's conferred on me by Section 17B5 of the Act as chair of the commission to declare that the following applications are being rescheduled. These dates will be sent out to everyone on the Conservation Dim Commission a division email list and posted on the town's website. The first group of applications are those that are being con continued to April 22nd. And Callie will now read each of those. Amendments to orders of conditions, SC um, 87 Mooncusters Lane, William and Bettina Shakespeare, SC 103313, phase two of the amendment process is a request to amend existing order of conditions under SC 103313 for a proposed removal replacement of front and rear walkways, changing material to granite, addition, addition of two walkways, expansion of front entry area, installation of dry wells, remove, replace boulder walls with masonry wall, install driveway edging, provide mitigation at 87 Moon Cussers Lane, assessor's map 11A um, F11. Also notices of intent, 34 Hallway Street, um, 34 Chatham Village Trust dated June 5th, 2015 and any amendments thereto is the owner, Valerie G. Crotrells and Harold Gould trustees are the applicants, SC 103404, proposed raise and replace single family dwelling and associated site impro improvements at 34 Hallway Street, Assessor's Map 17C, Parcel 16A. Also 543 Old Harbor Road, Tacoma Partners Limited Partnership, SC 103395, proposed construction of pool, pool deck, pool fence, split rail fence, repair of vitrified clay pipe and replacement of septic pump chamber at 543 Old Harbor Road, Assessor's Map 16H, Parcel 3. Also 41 Locust Lane, Jonathan O and Alicia W. Downs, SC 103407, proposed removal of five bedroom existing dwelling, proposed construction of new five bedroom dwelling, pool and septic system, proposed vegetation management at 41 Locust Lane, Assessor's Map 15F, Parcel 53. Also 41 Woodcarver Knoll, Stephen and Mary Keating, SC 103398, proposed elevated walkway with both per permanent and seasonal sections at 41 Woodcarver Knoll, Assessor's Map 11D-B. Also 100 and 102 Cedar Street, Matthew and Susan Bettine, SC 103410, proposed installation of a natural gas line, open pergola, seasonal kayak rack, repair, replace existing stairs, patio and fence, upgrade an outside grill area and landscape improvements at 102 Cedar Street, Assessor's Map 13C, Parcel 10. Also 440 Cockle Cove Road, Mark F. and Sherry L. Reith, SC 103408, proposed reconstruction of existing bulkhead and rock scour protection at 440 Cockle Cove Road, Assessor's Map 5B, Parcel 19. Okay, thank you, Callie. The second group um, are those applications that are being continued until at least May 13th. At the moment, we're just going to schedule them all for May 13th. And as I said, as we begin the process, once we finish these, of sorting them out and into hearing dates, we will keep you up to date on how that's going and you'll have uh, at least your two weeks notice before the hearing is conducted. So the following group of applications are hereby scheduled for May 13th. Matt, Callie, you can read those. Okay, uh, request for determination, 158 Oldfield Bend, M. M. Andrew Wiley, proposed removal of storm damaged trees, removal of invasive vines and Japanese knotweed, pruning Leland Cypress and pruning limbs around house and driveway at 158 Old Bend Road, Assessor's Map 14J, parcel R60. And also 324 Shore Road, CBI is the owner and CBI owner is the applicant, Capital Properties is the owner. Proposed removal of existing landscape plantings. Proposed replanting of landscape around the dwelling at 324 Shore Road, Assessor's Map 16E, 16E, and the parcel number is missing. Amendments to orders of conditions, 38 Briggs Way. 38 Briggs Way nominee trust, SE 103196. This is phase one of the amendment process. 
proposed relocation of approved elevated stairway to the location of the existing stone steps at 38 Briggs Way, Assessors Map 17D, Parcel B1. And 687 Fox Hill Road, Christopher L. Gargone Jr., SC 10 3184, Phase 2 of the amendment process. Request to amend an existing order of conditions, SC 10 3184, to include proposed moving and raising picket fencing. Replace carpet roses with knockout roses for delineation of meadow area. Locate existing, existing arborvitae on approved site plan at 687 Fox Hill Road, Assessors Map 12M, Parcel C5. Also, notices of intent, 45 Barcliff Ave Extension, Barcliff Market, LLC, SC 103411, proposed restoration and landscaping at 45 Barcliff Avenue Extension, Assessors Map 16F, Parcel N1, and 37, 39 Homestead Lane, Ann Hoppleton, Trustee is the applicant and Ann R. Hoppleton Revocable Trust is the owner, SC 103412, proposed removal of non-native um, vegetation replanting with native vegetation at 39 Homestead Lane, Assessors Map 15C, Parcel 21. And also 14 Pine Ridge Road, 14, um, oh, four, sorry, something popped up on my computer. Um, 14 Pine Ridge Road, 14 Pine Ridge Road Realty Trust, Cynthia S. Paul D. and Samuel D. Dollinger, Swetland and Swetland Trustees, SC 10 one three proposed construction of an addition on a crawl space foundation proposed deck expansion at 14 pine ridge road assessors map 8c parcel 24 and 46 little beach road crimson peak llc is the owner LLC. morris island nominee trust is the applicant no se number is assigned proposed demolition of existing dwelling and septic system construction of a new dwelling meeting FEMA NFIP standards, installation of new septic system at 46 Little Beach Road, Assessor's Map 16A, Parcel H44. Um, also, 47 Little Beach Road, Crimson Peak LLC is the owner, Morris Island Nominee Trust is the applicant, no SE number is assigned, proposed demolition of existing dwelling and septic system, construction of new dwelling meeting FEMA NFIP standards, installation of new septic system at 46 Little Beach Road, Assessor's Map 16A, Parcel H50. Also, 53 Little Beach Road, Crimson Peak LLC is the owner. Morris Island Nominee Trust is the applicant. No SE number is assigned. Proposed demolition of existing dwelling and septic system. Construction of new dwelling meeting FEMA NFIP standards. Installation of new septic system at, 40, at 53 Little Beach Road. Also, 144 Chat Harder Lane, Michael and Lori McKenna are the applicant. Algene Nominee Trust, Eugene Farber and Harvey Ross are trustees are the owner. SC 103415, proposed raising existing structure, restoration of coastal bank, property redevelopment at, one, at 144 Chat Harbor Road, assessors map 5B, parcel 10. 74 and 77 Sears Point, Patrick Brogan and Patricia Black, no SE number is assigned, proposed construction of new driveway to existing guest house, implementation of a land management plan for invasive species control at 74 and 77 Sears Point Road, assessors map 11A, parcels 10B and 11. 159 Sea Pine Road, David Hill, Hanover Company is the applicant. Diane Denby is the owner. No SE number is assigned. Proposed demolition of existing dwelling, construction of new dwelling at 159 Sea Pine Road. Assessor's map 11K, parcel HC13. And 104 Cranberry Lane, Elizabeth Ann Donnelly, SE 103414. Proposed construction and installation of hardscape off the west side of the dwelling, including stone retaining wall, built-in grill area, four-foot walkway, stone steppers in back, stone retaining wall in the front, installation of generator off driveway of 104 Cranberry Lane, assessor's map, 15J, parcel W6. And 335 Cedar Street, Robert E. and Catherine E. Lewis, no um, SC number is assigned. And after the fact, filing for proposed hardscape between dwelling and garage with approximately 400 square feet of increased site coverage at 335 Cedar Street, Assessor's Map 12B, Parcel 17. Thank you, Callie. Um, as I said, this list will be emailed to everybody on the current Conservation Division email list. It will also be posted on the town website. 
um, so that uh, if you missed uh, the information, you'll be able to catch it there. Um, we recognize, I'll just say now, that, that these delays and continuances um, are going to cause some, some frustration and some pain. Um, but we ask that under the extraordinary circumstances that we everybody finds themselves in, that everybody continue to exercise some patience and some flexibility as we uh, work our way through uh, a significant workload. I know you've heard me say this again, and it just doesn't, it bears a bit of repeating that this Conservation Commission is made up of a group of citizens who are volunteering their time uh, and are doing their very best under the circumstances. So uh, we ask for your uh, continued patience here. With that, the participants on the call and on the platform um, who are attending for today for any of the applications that have been rescheduled may now hang up or disconnect because we're going to proceed to review uh, the remaining applications next. And before we get to those, a couple of notes on today's proceedings. Um, as we indicated in the uh, email that we sent out um, 10 days or so ago, because we're conducting these hearings remotely, we are limiting them strictly to three hours um, with a, a midpoint break to take our eyes off of our screens and stretch our legs for a moment. We are also finding out that things getting through matters takes longer under these circumstances. So in order to keep these hearings at a, at a reasonable three hour limit, we're asking for everybody to focus um, intently and concisely on what they need to say. So presenters should try to get any presentation they are doing in under five minutes. And um, the commissioners will also be exercising um, all of, uh, <laughs> exercising uh, restraint in trying to focus uh, on exactly the information that they need to know. Yes, I'm going to get to the roll call in a moment when I finish uh, the uh, instructions here. Callie Harper, the conservation agent, is controlling the team's platform. Um, she is continuing to try to mute all participants. If you see that you are not muted, please mute yourself. Um, if you're on the phone, you know how to do that. If you're on the meeting platform, look for the uh, microphone icon and click that, and you should see it change to indicate that it's muted. Um, I also ask, and everybody seems to be complying with uh, turning off your cameras, except for the commission members um, who I, I ask, I can't tell from where I'm sitting now whether you have turned them back on. We'll find that out when we get to the roll call in a moment. Um, if and when there are site plans or landscape plans to discuss, Callie will pull up the electronic version onto her screen and will share her screen. Uh, presenters should use the image that's showing on her screen to describe the point he or she is making. Uh, we know this is not perfect. We're going to do our best to display the correct portion of the plan being discussed, uh, but we may not be able to do that perfectly. As we go through each open application, I'll be asking for questions and comments first from each of the commission members. Then I'll ask for public comment. If you wish to speak, please wait, and then you should unmute yourself. Please start by stating your name, and then you can ask your question or make your comment. Note, again, comments are limited to under three minutes. And despite our best efforts, we still may not be able to provide for real-time access for everybody who wishes to participate, so we'll be posting a record of this meeting on the town's website as soon as possible. Remember that all motions in today's hearing must be made by a commissioner, first stating his or her name, and then state the motion. Similarly, seconds to motions should also be made by stating your name and then your second. And all commission votes will be by roll call. When I call on each commissioner, please make sure your camera's on, unmute yourself, state your vote, and then go back to being muted. Um, so that we have a record of the quorum of the commission attending today, I'll now ask each commission member to indicate their presence by saying present when I call your name. Uh, Ms. Holt. Uh, present. Mr. Kitts. Present. Rawls. Present. Del Vecchio. Present. Clark. Janet, I, I think he's he's present. I see his number. Um, is Tom, if you're listening, can you press star six on your yeah. phone to unmute yourself? He is muted. Uh, 
Um, so star six. Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't realize I was being overridden by the system. Uh, right. Clark here. Thank you. Okay. Just, it's, we, we all have patience through this. All right. I think that's it for the introductory uh, portion of today. So, Callie, we should go directly to our first order of business. Okay. Orders of conditions. Parcel 2, also known as Zero Nantucket Drive, Bucks Creek Association, care of James O. O'Connell, SE 103397. Propo proposal to put controls in place to monitor the condition of the marsh and allow restorative plantings to be installed as necessary. Plantings to be monitored and augmented as necessary to achieve the success rate at, at um, parcel two, also known as Zero Nantucket Drive, Assessor's Map 6B, parcel two. And just as a note, the letter from NHESP was received on April 2nd, 2020. Why don't we go ahead and read that into the record before we discuss the order of conditions? Okay. Just give me one one second. Yep, yep, take your time. We're all pulling up the order anyway. Okay, I hope everyone can can see this. Um, it's dated April 2nd. Uh, it says, Dear Commissioners, the applicant listed above has submitted a notice of intent with site plans dated 1-18-2020 um, to the National Heritage and Endangered Species Program of the Massachusetts Division of Fisheries and Wildlife, also known as the Division, in compliance with the Wildlife Species Section of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, 310 CMR 10.37. Based on a review of the information that was provided and the information that is currently contained um, in our database, the division has determined that this project as currently proposed will not adversely affect the actual resource area habitat of state protected rare wildlife species. Therefore, it is our opinion that this project meets the state listed per species performance standard for the issuance of an order of conditions. Upon filing for renewal, extension, or amendment of the order of conditions, the applicant shall contact the division for written response regarding impacts to the resource area habitats of state listed wildlife. Please note that this determination addresses only the matters of rare wildlife habitat and does not pertain to other wildlife habitat, wildlife habitat issues that may be pertinent to the proposed project. Based on the review of the information that was provided and the information that is currently contained in our database, the division has also determined that this project does not require further review pursuant to the MESA, uh, Massachusetts Endangered Species Act. The property owner has the responsibility of protecting breeding piping plovers and state listed species of terns that may occur on this section of beach. Therefore, regulator, regular monitoring for the presence of piping plovers and terns by a qualified shorebird monitor as determined by the division during the periods of April 1st to August 31st must be allowed as well as protection of any nest scrapes or unfledged chicks with symbolic fencing, which are warning signs, um, warning signs and twine fencing. Please note this determination does not renew or extend the division's 2014 determination for the boardwalk repair replacement project pursuant to the MESA. Any changes to the salt marsh restoration of and or boardwalk improvements must be provided to the division and may require an additional filing with a division pursuant to the MESA. This authorization for salt marsh restor restoration is valid for five years from the date of issuance and limited to the project described herein. Um, please note this determination addresses only the matters of state listed species and their habitats. If you have any questions regarding this letter, please contact Amy Honig. Okay, thank you, Callie. All right, does everybody, have you all seen uh, and reviewed the draft order of conditions? Um, and at this point, um, I have very little to add to it. Um, so maybe I'll just make my notations. Um, I've already noted them down. Um, the one thing I would um, I've I've changed as I've gone through this, wherever it appears, is is changing the the name and removing the title of after the fact, um, because in 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 point of fact, this is this is a order of conditions to resolve uh, an, ex an an enforcement order. 
So the title is the project type. Instead of after the fact, I indicated it's restoration of damaged salt marsh to resolve violation. Um, it would have been an after the fact if they were doing anything relating to the underlying project, but they're not. This is a new order of conditions to restore the salt marsh. So I just want to make sure that that's clear and it's not uh, relating to the pre-existing orders. Um, the only other notes I have on here um, is I removed. Um, in special condition number two, I just uh, would make it a bit more specific in terms of the, the DMF letter that you just read, Callie. Um, and just say that the um, I've added the language in here, and you'll get this later, that the, the updated restoration plan will be submitted prior to the start of work to reflect the three to one ratio as described in the Di Division of Marine Fisheries comment letter. Um, and that's really all I had to change on this. So with that, I'm going to mute myself so that my typing uh, is not too loud and ask uh, other commissioners who would like to speak to indicate that. Anybody? Mitch Del Vecchio here. Yes, hi, Bob. Hi, Jen. Uh, on uh, special conditions number yeah, signed to keep the uh, people off the marsh as, as it's being restored, um, I'd like to add something to that, saying that the uh, Bucks Creek Association residents um, or members should be notified uh, via uh, the association newsletter uh, to please stay off the marsh as it's being restored. And um, also for uh, C, re revegetation and planting, number five, um, uh, just no pesticides and eliminate uh, herbicides in that sentence. We still don't have that perfected yet. <laughs> we're, st we're still working on getting that language standardized. Got it. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Holt? Yes. Has a comment on I have the same uh, special condition, I believe, to number eight. We state a, that's where a sign shall be placed on each quadrant immediately um, before May 1. <clears throat> um, do we want to st uh, be more specific with regard to the size of the signage? and how long it must be in place and it must be maintained. Um, do you have a suggested language or? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, well, I guess it's more of a, um, rather than suggesting the language is, oh, I see, that the sign be, I don't know, what's a, a reasonable size? Um, I don't know. Two feet, well, no less than two feet by a foot wide. I, maybe the way to do it is to is to specify that it needs to be legible from a certain distance. Okay, and that it stay it. it uh, I presume the set the uh, it means it's permanent that um, condition that it's a permanent sign that's there in, in, on season and off season. We would unless it mm. says. Um, this is Callie. Unless it says that it's it should be an ongoing condition, um, I'm I'm having a little bit of trouble following which condition you're you're referring to. Number eight, and it says it is an ongoing condition. Yep, then it is. So, okay. Callie, does that mean the sign remains there beyond the restoration period? It means that the sign would have to um, a sign would be placed in each quadrant and that would be an ongoing condition of the of the certificate of compliance. So yeah, it would have to be um, it would it would be ongoing. I'm just I'm just want to be clear about this so that once the after the, the three year period has run and the certificate of compliance is issued, those signs need to stay in place. Yeah. That's the way it's written. Okay, I'm not sure. This, that is, that... Uh, this is Kits here. Yes. Didn't, 
didn't we talk about the the homeowners association developing an educational program around this and those signs would help focus that educational program i believe we did so that might help us kind of work through exactly what we want here i i agree i think what we're talking about here are actually two different kinds of signs. One is a warning sign for people to stay away from the salt marsh during the period of the restoration. But I think as we talked about and Joe just pointed out, there's also an opportunity for the association to conduct some public education here and once the restoration is complete to put in some public education signage about the, the nature of the salt marsh. And then we can we can add that there. And that, and that part would be the, the con ongoing condition. Okay. Anything else? I have a question. This is Mark Burgess. Okay, hang on one second, Mark. Let me just make sure that the commission is done. I have yeah, no I have, this is Bob Rawls. I have... Yep. Um, okay. I guess it's a question slash comment. If do these conditions allow us to know whether or not foot traffic is occurring, whether it's foot traffic is being monitored, whether damage from foot traffic is being monitored, will we know it? Um, because I know we have a sign. And the only other thing I can see is that we have something that says 90% success rate with the plantings. So mm -hmm. I guess, you know, between the two of those, we might know what we might not. I just wonder whether or not we should have something more specific about monitoring damage from foot traffic. Because that was sort of what was kicking all this off anyway. Yep, yep. And in um, general conditions, Section C, reg B, vegetation and planting, which is actually very pertinent to this, and that starts on page 11. Um, H I J K L 11 L um, requires a written annual report with photographs to show the condition of the marsh. Okay. We don't normally require reporting uh, any more frequently than that. Um, and in fact, given the, the the nature of this marsh, that would probably be adequate. Okay. Okay. Um, are there any other commissioners? All right. Uh, members of the public, Mr. Burgess, you asked. Uh, so go ahead, please. Thank you. Uh, you can hear me, right? Yes, we hear you. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, this special condition two, we had talked about the three to one ratio. So I'm interested as to how that would be implemented only because we've identified the full areas that are impacted by the by the uh, construction. So how do we do three times 100 percent? Wait a minute, I'm just looking at the language. Mm -hmm. It's I, I, well, like I believe it's if, measured not by not by area, but by plants. By density, by yes. density of plants. Right. Well, the, the planting guide tells us what density to plant the new plants in, and we've identified four 200 square foot areas that were impacted. And of course, whatever's, whatever needs to be planted in those areas will be replanted. But that's basically one to one as far as restoring the area to, you know, restoring or planting 100% of any of the affected areas. Uh, it's, in my view, it's impossible to do 300% because we have nowhere else to go. This condition was a requirement um, and was specifically identified in the Division of Marine Fisheries comment letter and the commission in the past usually um, abides by those um, suggestions from the state. We do. I understand. It's, it's really a question of how densely you plant the, the new plugs or, or that you put in there. I mean, you can look at the at the 2014 photos of those quadrants, and it is um, a very dense area of grass. And if, and after the damage that was done to the salt marsh, it, that density does not exist. 
Oh, I agree. So you're talking about usually when we talk about a three to one mitigation, that's either like, uh, well, the number of trees, for instance, or square footage. So we can't increase the square footage, but we correct. Can, right. what, that's you, correct. So right. the goal, the goal of the condition is just to bring the density back up to the surrounding areas. Exactly right. I would agree with that. No problem. Okay. Okay. Uh, I, we can make that more specific. That it's three to one with respect to density. Plant density. Yes. Okay. Um, the uh, the condition that National Heritage had for the uh, clover monitoring. Um, none of the work is actually in clover habitat because we're not doing any work on the beach, and I don't know that they understood that entirely when they when they looked at it. But obviously, we're doing work in the tidal zone where there wouldn't be any nests. Um, so you can leave it in there, but there wouldn't be any need to hire anybody because it's not there. We're not in their habitat on the beach. Okay. Um, I, I think you was speaking to the access, um, but I again I don't think the commission should. I think the commit whatever the state recommends for a condition, it should be put in the order. Yeah, it's there, and whether or not it it, it imposes any obligation is a is a different question. But we are complying with what they asked. I understand. Yep. Um, lastly, this is only the last thing. The fencing that's there now, um, do you really do you want to leave it up in perpetuity, or just in, until the area? If we can document that foot traffic has been reduced that the, you know the association has been educated my only point is sometimes fences are barriers to other things including people so i don't know if you really want to leave it in there in, in, for perpetuity or whether after the satisfactory restoration is achieved you know right the, the goal it, would, be achieved. it would be my um suggestion to not put it in yet but um, when we get to the point of issuing um, a certificate of compliance, it may be added as an ongoing condition then if it's needed. Um, but I agree that um, a fence would uh, act as a deterrent uh, for a number of, of, of wildlife and other things that we don't want to do. So um, if it's not needed, if the restoration is successful and there's no indication that people are accessing it, it would be my recommendation anyway to remove that condition at that point. Otherwise, it would be added to the certificate. So keep it in for now, but it could be removed as part of a COC. Well, I think it's the other way around. I don't think oh. we can put it in an order and, and it says it's ongoing and then decide later that it's not. I think the, okay. the better way is to take it out of this with the knowledge that we may add it to the order of conditions. I mean, I, I'm sorry, the certificate of compliance. Is that something that we can do, Callie? Uh, we don't typically do that. Um, we don't typically add conditions to a certificate of compliance okay. that could weren't we, in the original order. Could we change the, the language then instead of saying this condition shall be recorded to say may be recorded? Yep. Okay. And that gives us the flexibility then of deciding whether or not we need it at that point. Thank you very much. Is that it, Mr. Burgess? Yes, it is. Thank you. Thank you. And any other members of the public uh, or participants who wish to speak to this? Okay, hearing nobody, um, we need then a motion to close this matter. Uh, Commissioner Holt, a uh, motion to close the hearing. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner Kitts, second. Thank you. We have two seconds. All right. Roll call vote to close this matter. Uh, Ms. Holt? Aye. Mr. Kitts? Aye. Mr. Walls? Aye. Mr. Delvecchio? Aye. Mr. Clark? Aye. Chair votes aye. It's unanimous to close. Is there a motion to approve the order of conditions as amended? Commissioner Holt? So moved. moved. Okay, moved. Is there a second? Clark second. second. <laughs> we should assign these roles. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, roll call vote to move the approve the order of conditions as amended at uh, at the table. Well, on this session, uh, Ms. Holt. Aye. Mr. Kitts. Aye. Rawls. Aye. Delvecchio. Aye. Clark. Aye. Chair votes aye. Unanimous vote to approve the order of conditions. All right. Um, all right, Callie. On to the next item on the agenda. Okay, request for determination of applicability, Route 28 at one at 1031 Orleans Road, Mass Department of Transportation, Highway Division, District 5, 
proposed installation of a paved waterway in lieu of the approved addition of a leaching catch basin, proposed brush removal around structure at 20 at Route 28 north of the driveway at 1031 Orleans Road in Roadway. Okay, thank you. Um, so Ms. Coates is is with us, I take it. Are you, are you here? Can you please unmute? And Andrea, if you're if you Andrea, need, yeah, I need have to unmute yourself, you can press star six. If you're on the phone. Um, she's still muted, but let's go. We'll just keep moving ahead. So has everybody had a chance to look at these this plan? This is this was this was before us last year um, as a slightly different uh, proposal to um, do a leaching basin installation. Yeah, Andrea just joined. Oh, thank you. Oh. Good. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. We're, people are coming and going as they should be. Um, I was just wanted, wanted to ask the question. I was giving the context that this matter had been before us about a year ago. Correct. The installation of a leaching basin. So I'm curious to, as to what happened with that and why it's now being turned into a paved waterway. Uh, they found utilities in the area they wanted to put the leaching basin in and um, because the location of the drainage is important they thought that just making it into a paved waterway would be the best idea to remove the storm water from the edge of that driveway okay um Questions from the commission? Yeah, Commissioner Holt. Um, yep. Now, how is the water um, then fil inf fil filtered, the stormwater? Uh, with a paved waterway, it, it wouldn't be. It would just redirect it instead of into the driveway off the road into the oh, shoulder. Okay. okay, got it. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions or comments? All right. Does anybody wish to make a motion for a negative determination? Commissioner Holt, uh, motion for a negative determination. Thank you. Is there a second? Mr. Del Vecchio, second. Thank you. Roll call on the vote before us for a negative determination. Uh, Ms. Holt. Aye. Mr. Kitts. Aye. Rawls. Aye. Del Vecchio? Aye. Clark? Aye. Chair votes aye. It's unanimous to approve a negative determination. Thank you so much. I have a quick question, though. I know you mentioned for orders um, that it could be up to 45 days after the emergency order is lifted. Um, we have a moratorium on Cape Cod where we need to work um, before Memorial Day or after Labor Day. Uh, do you think it will be a problem to get a negative determination issued before? So well, we you're, you're in luck. Um, the, the determinations are done. We sign, We will be signing that today. Okay, and excellent. It should be issued within, I, I would expect, within a couple of days by the uh, Conservation Division office. It would not be very long, and it's effective immediately. Perfect. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, Callie, on to the next matter. Sure. Uh, 116, this is um, RDA's 116 Old Wharf Road. Margaret McCarthy is the owner. Safe Harbor Environmental is the applicant. It's proposed planting um, a thousand square feet of American beach grass, grass on an eroding coastal bank at 116 Old Wharf Road, assessor's map 16I, parcel J1. Okay, thank you. Let me get it pulled up here because for some reason. Do you want me to pull it up on my shared screen? Yes, why don't you, if you can do that easily. Okay. So I'm just, I'm pulling up this, um, picture because I think it's the most um, mm -hmm. it's easiest to really see. Um, 
So there you go. Is that the one you were thinking of, Janet? That's it. That's, the, that's it. So there, we're going to be doing this twice. There are two separate RDAs in front of us, each for about a thousand square foot of planting of beach grass um, in this area. And this area um, is directly across from both Old Wharf Road and Linnell Lane. It's also accessed um, if you were walking uh, northward from Calyard Landing, you get to this area. It's one of those uh, very, very dynamic areas that has been eroding. Um, and Mr. Peabody, I believe you are you are with us. If you would uh, kindly unmute yourself, um, you may you may speak to um, the purpose of this uh, proposal very very briefly. No. He's, he's still muted. Oh, here. He's unmuted now. There you go. He's unmuted. Mr. Peabody, are you there? No. Um, I'm not sure. But, well, let's just start with, with questions and comments amongst the commission. And having reviewed the proposal, um, I would have liked to have asked him. I mean, I do understand that it is eroding and that the beach grass um, is designed to to slow down or halt that process. Um, does anybody else have any comments or questions? Yeah, Commissioner Holt, um, is this an overwash area? Is what I'm I'm wondering because um, it appears to be, but I'm not clear on why this area. Uh, is in the condition it is as opposed to adjacent portions of this this um, beach. Is Mr. Peabody able to speak to that? It's my understanding, Dee, Dee that it does it is subject to to at least occasional um, overwash, and that's that's pretty a anecdotal on my part from what I've observed uh, there. Um, I, I think to the rest, since um, Gordon's having some trouble yep. um, calling in, this project has been um, planted with beach grass for some time through an administrative review process. And um, with the new updated policy, it required work in a resource area. Um, any work in a resource area, sh work should be done, th permitted through an RDA. Right. And actually an RDA is a better, is a better, type of vehicle for permitting in this case because it allows for them to replant in such a dynamic area for three years versus having to go back each time for permitting every six months. Um, so I think this is a really dynamic area and um, so the answer to um, Dee Dee's question is uh, yeah. Okay and do you know offhand Callie whether how if this has been planted has it been been overwashed and the plants uh, removed from time to time and it has to be redone. Is that the issue? I, that is my understanding. Um, yeah, I also yeah. think that as you know, sand moves and so it's not just overwash. It may also be, um, you know, various sand movement activities or any sort of um, nourishment activities that I think like if you guys remember going out to Linnell Lane um, and looking when they did that gabions, you saw, mm -hmm. or at least I saw, mm -hmm. um, some grasses, just little tops of it. They're just peeking up over the yep. sand that's moving around. And I yep. would imagine that this area is the same. That's true. Are you satisfied, Callie, with the that the uh, um, the request has has a, has a process Im embedded in it that will protect the resource area during the planting? Yeah, I think I think this both of these projects, um, while it was a little bit of a heavier lift for the applicant to submit an RDA, I think in the long run it's better for the resource area because it's valid for three years. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Commissioner, Commissioner Holt again. Um, I get. I'm assuming there are no habitat issues uh, regarding timing when this is done. I will. I'll have to check on that. Um, I don't know the answer off the top of my head. Okay. Del Vecchio here. 
Yes, Bob. Is there any regrading going to be done, or is it just, just basic planting of the beach grass? It's my understanding that it's just planting. Yep. No regrading. Mm -mm. I know that um, in speaking with um, Gordon and um, his staff that they're eager and very pleased that this RDA could be heard today because I think they're coming up with sort of the end of the um, grass planting season. And um, so I would imagine that um, they've also looked into any sort of time of year restrictions for that planting, if there are any. Okay. Is this this is so this proposal is identical to 96 Old Wharf Road except for the the two locations are side by side? That's my understanding. Yeah. Should we can we approve these together? Yeah. Do you want me to read the other agenda item in? Yes, okay. please. Yep. Um, 96 Old Wharf Road, Gregory Johnson, MD is the owner. Safe Harbor Environmental is the applicant. Proposed planting of 1,000 square feet of American beach grass on an eroding coastal bank at 96 Old Wharf Road, Assessor's Map 16I, Parcel TS1. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, any other questions or comments from the commission? Any questions or comments from any other participants on the call? Okay, is there a motion for a negative determination? Commissioner Holt makes a motion for a negative determination. Okay, thank you. Is there a second? Mr. Kitts, second. Thank you. Roll call vote for the ne negative determination. Ms. Holt. Votes aye. Kitts. Aye. Rawls. Aye. Delvecchio. Aye. Clark. Aye. Chair votes aye on both uh, matters before us, so they are both issued with negative terminations. Uh, to the chair, may I read the next agenda item? Yep. Let me just remind the commissioners that um, you should have received the um, RDA signature sheets for the three matters that we just approved. Um, so I would ask you to make sure you sign those and send them uh, to Mary so that she can attach them and issue the negative determinations. There are two others that, have, that are not on the schedule for today, so just make sure you're signing the three. The uh, Orleans Road, 116 Old Wharf Road, and 96 Old Wharf Road. Thank you. Okay, Callie, on to the next one. Okay. Uh, violations, Outermost Harbor Marine, 83 Seagull Road, vegetation removal and regrading in wetland resource areas and buffer zones um, and adjacent upland resource area. Um, okay. I'm just looking for um, anyone in the participant box. I don't, I don't see anyone. Is there anybody on the phone whose name is not showing up from to speak to this? Huh, okay. All right, I will, um, do you want me to go ahead? Yeah, and go ahead and, yep. The enforcement order, it's just gonna, it might take me a minute. Yeah. I'll just while you're pulling it up, I'll remind the commission members that this is this enforcement order was aimed at the vegetation removal and the regrading that happened um, in the resource area adjacent to the small parking area um, where equipment had been parked and, and equipment had been moved through the resource area. Um, there was um, some correspondence with uh, some of the folks from Outermost about um, what they wanted to do about this. They had sent an email to Cali indicating that it was their belief that uh, somebody associated with the Quitnesset uh, um, Homeowners Association um, was willing to do some, to take on the, the revegetation of the area, which is fine as a matter of, of as an idea, um, but they're not authorized to, to develop a site plan or a restoration plan. Um, as which is required by the enforcement order. Um, nonetheless, uh, we learned, um, I guess, yesterday that 
Um, some person or persons from the Quitnesset Association went ahead and replanted the area. Um, again, that's not in compliance with what the enforcement order required. Um, and as such, it's actually a further violation because it's conducting work in a resource area without uh, authorization to do so. Um, so at this point, um, the, the question of whether or not the area has been satisfactorily restored is not is not really relevant. What's relevant is that they did not submit any of the documentation that was required by the enforcement order. And um, Callie, is, can you, so there's the description, trucks, uh, go ahead. Yeah, this is the, in, in the enforcement order, this is the um, first page and it describes the extent and type of the activity and this enforcement order, as well as photographs, were sent to uh, Coastal Engineering, as well as to Outermost Harbor Marine. And then as we move down um, in the enforcement order, we required a restoration plan to be filed on March 10th, and we received um, some other materials instead of what was required by the commission um, on, on that date. And... Um, if you scroll down to the last page, it shows that what was required and the commission had required to be submitted on March 10th, a site plan to show the disturbed resource areas and buffer zones, the area and square footage of disturbed area, the distance of the disturbed area to adjacent salt marsh and the distance between an approved staging area and area of disturbance. They, as you guys typically do, um, you required a restoration plan and work protocol um, to be submitted, uh, which details how the disturbed area will, will be returned to pre-construction uh, condition. The restoration plan shall be developed by a qualified individual and the work should be performed by an individual with ecological restoration experience. Um, you also reserve the right to inter interview that contractor. Um, you also reserve the right for additional information and the enforcement hearing, which is what we're having today, um, was scheduled for March 25th, but since that meeting was canceled, it was continued to this date. So we're in response to the this enforcement order, Outermost Harbor Marine um, submitted some materials. And these are, it consisted of a letter from Outermost Harbor Marine dated March 10th, as well as a letter from Quitnesset Associates dated February 29th. And um, also a comment letter from um, Paul Griska, um, who is in a butter to the project, as well as very fuzzy black and white uh, drone photos taken on um, February 24th. Um, it looks like they've been um, processed in some sort of GIS software that identifies um, square footage. Um, the area of, the, of this box that's shown here is not the full extent of the area of disturbance which is why the commission, I would imagine, asked for a professional to go out there and, and do an actual site plan. This is not, despite what the title says, this is not a site plan. This is a photograph taken with a um, UAV or a drone and that a site plan and, and a drone image are, are not the same thing. Okay. So to date, um, I would observe that they have not complied with the enforcement order. Um, I don't know what they've done. I haven't looked at what they actually planted, where they planted it. As I said before, I don't think it's relevant, except to the extent that it might actually constitute a separate violation. Uh, do you know who, did they say who did the planting, Callie? Do we have any information about who? No, I, I, I didn't. Okay. Um, I can go back and look on no. my email, but um, I looked. I, I noticed on the email it didn't say. It just said that uh, Quitnesset Associates did it. Um, it doesn't really matter because we're not assessing that at the moment. Um, but given that there's nobody, go ahead. It only matters in the sense that the commission required, as part of this enforcement order, that a qualified contractor do the work. Right. And so, not knowing who did the work means is also. Um, further information for why they're um, out of this they're not in compliance with right. the enforcement order. They're not in compliance with any part of it at this point. They did not submit any of the required information, no site plan, no restoration plan, no qualified contractor. Um, and again, the fact that some activity, some work was done 
um, is only relevant insofar as it might be a further violation. Um, but given that there's nobody here today to speak to it, um, I would suggest that we continue this enforcement hearing to April 22nd and communicate to Outermost that they are required to submit the documentation required by the enforcement order no later than April 17th so that it's available for review at the enforcement hearing on the 22nd. I, I, I will communicate to that, that to them for, um, for a fourth time. <laughs> and if, the, if it is not, if compliance is not forthcoming by the 17th, then we will um, once again review our, our enforcement options. Uh, take whatever Mr. action is necessary. Yes. I have a, a question. Um, so work was done in the resource area that was not permitted. Is that correct by the Quinesset Association? Yeah, the even I mean, the Quinesset so, Association went out and planted the area before an enforcement hearing had even taken place and therefore before any sort of um response from the commission as far as what was required to happen as a result of the enforcement or the um the violation before any of that went out so well, before any discussions and before any documentation from the commission of what was allowed to to restore the area they went ahead and, and did the planting right so in other words that this was this is the second violation that uh, janet was referring to but this time it's a different violator. It's now the Quinesset Association. Is that right? Yes. Um, yes. It's just, I think that I'm, I'm not an attorney um, by any means. Um, I'm a biologist, but I, I think, <laughs> I think probably it's best to stay on the track of, you know, it, it seems like a property issue or some sort of civil issue between uh, Outermost and Quitnesset as far as who planted, who did what at what time. Um, right. Unless the commission today wants um, to go ahead and issue an enforcement order um, to Quitnesset Associates for planting in the resource area. No, I'd prefer to keep to keep Outermost Harbor as the one who committed the initial violation and everything flows from that. And to, the issue of their relationship with Quitnesset is not something that, that we're going to get involved in. We're going to hold them continually responsible for fixing this. But shouldn't we at least send Quinesset just a letter? I'm not at, not at, not um, getting... Yeah, we should remind them that they that they went ahead and did, did activity in a resource area without any authorization to do so. Right. We can send them a notice of, of violation on something like that. Okay. Okay. Thank you. This is Kitts. I mean, Kelly's comment about this is the fourth time. When is enough enough? Yeah. Yep. I mean, to me, three strikes and you're out. So this is this is the fourth time that I've communicated with Outermost about what was required under this enforcement hearing. Um, there have been other uh, letters of uh, violation that have gone out to Outermost Harbor, um, one that was recently done by the chair and vice chair while I was away uh, with the flu. Um, so to your point is there's definitely been several separate violations as well as um, one that was previously back in December of, of um, 2019, um, which triggered the uh, filing of an after the fact permit for, for work in the actual dredge channel. So this is now sort of the third time that, that a letter or um, an actual enforcement order has gone out to Outermost Harbor Marine. And also in this particular case with the disturbance um, to the resource area just outside of the staging area, this has been the, this will now be the fourth time that I've, that I've communicated to Outermost Harbor that the requirements of the enforcement order that you guys are seeing today is what is required. And they decided that they're going to submit something different to the commission and leave it up to the commission to decide whether or not they would accept the materials that are shown up here on on this on the shared screen. 
Do we think, and he asked this question to the commission, is this one of those matters where we should authorize Cali to begin the process of assessing fines on a daily basis? I think, I think given, if I could, if I could just interject, I think given the fact that, um, I think we should give them one more chance given these extenuating circumstances that we're in with COVID-19 and, um, but I think as, as my opinion as the agent, I think that the deadlines for a continued enforcement hearing on April 22nd with a filing date for, for the materials for that and hearing being on April 17th, um, I think that that is a reasonable amount of time given the amount of time that we gave them two months initially to prepare the materials. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been almost three months for them to have that opportunity and they chose to go to go a different way. But I think if we don't get those at that continued hearing, I, my recommendation would be for at that time on April 22nd for you guys to uh, con consider additional enforcement. This is Bob Rawls. Uh, can we in the next communication tell them that we intend to fine if they don't submit the required materials by the date that we require? I, I, I can't say that. I can say that a fine uh, maybe a, maybe um, maybe issued, um, but I think given the conversation here today, which this will be posted on 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 the town website, that um, I think it's very clear from this conversation in, in open meeting. Well, hopefully that will do the trick, um, and we get compliance quickly. Yeah, this is Kitts again. I, I I agree with what you're saying, Callie, but I would like to propose that it's the strongest possible language in this last notification. This is Commissioner Clark. I agree with uh, Commissioner Kitts. Okay, I do too. I mean, I I'm willing to we're willing to give them some leeway under the circumstances, but at the same time. Um, I think it would be unfortunate if someone were to take advantage of these circumstances to uh, escape doing what they're supposed to be doing. So I think that the communication that goes to them um, should contain, and I can help you with that, Callie, we'll circulate it in um, very strong language to warn them. Okay. Okay. All right. Moving on to the next violation. Uh, sorry, let me just get settled here. Um, sorry, five, okay. five, well, you can change your screen and do what you need to do. Take a moment. <laughs> um, 552 Orleans Road, Hungately LLC, regrading of resource areas and sedimentation of salt marsh. Um, okay. So by by way of background again on this one, this is a this is this is a violation that occurred last summer, and um, we had we had no uh, compliance for months and months. Um, um, as my notes remind me, um, the, the the homeowner um, a couple of things the homeowner has retained. Um, I think it is Crawford Land Management to prepare a site plan and restoration plan. We have been um, willing to uh, be more flexible with this than usual um, due to the fact that the homeowner ha is undergoing treatment for cancer. Um, that said, he does have an, a, an administrative assistant who's supposed to be handling this, so it's not a reason that everything should just stop. Um, but. Mm. Can Don't know that anything me? was. Yes, who's speaking? Oh, sorry. This is Nick Crawford from. Crawford. Okay, hold on one second, Nick. I'm going to come to oh. you because I. Yeah. Um, so the the enforcement order that was issued and approved um, did require submission of restoration plans and site plans, and to date we haven't received anything. Um, so with that, uh, Nick, uh, you may. Yeah. So I, I do question. have an update. Um, Basically, what's happened was um, he did contract with Coastal Engineering to provide an existing conditions and site plan quite a while ago, um, last year. Um, we were contacted in um, 
I believe it was right at the beginning of January. Um, it was right after I got back from uh, North Dakota. So he contracted us in the beginning of January. We received a signed proposal sometime in February um, after he said he was going to contract with us. We just received the um, we just received a deposit to proceed with the work. Um, not not quite a month ago, but probably two weeks. Um, so in the past two weeks, we have taken coastal engineering site plan and we have we have developed a restoration plan uh, to restore the site back to uh, pre work conditions, especially up around the house and to um, enhance the vegetative buffer along the salt marsh, along with removing all the issues um, that are uh, apparent out there. So um, I sent that draft to him last week, and I am just waiting to be able to um, connect with him. So I, I don't know what your um, uh, uh, plans are as far as submitting a restoration plan for a violation. Um, does that need to be done a week before the next hearing, or um, what's the time frame on submission of those materials? Um, Janet, may I interject? Yes, go ahead. Uh, so, Nick, are you, because we've received, the commission has already received the site plan from Coastal Engineering, and it was my impression okay. that Coastal Engineering was almost, for lack of a better term, project managing this violation. So, are you okay. going to be submitting your restoration plan to Coastal Engineering, or are you going to be submitting the restoration with, in simultaneously with Coastal Engineering? Right. It was my intention to submit the restoration plan directly to you guys since you already have the site plan um, and it has an accompanying uh, restoration protocol in the notes that says how the work will be done, uh, where the wor work will be done, what uh, equipment's used and the access and so forth. So um, if the next hearing is April 22nd, if we, if I could um, submit by April 15th, one week before the next hearing, um, I think that should give me enough time to be able to uh, be able to connect with William Gately and iron out this restoration plan so that we can put this issue to uh, to bed. So there's there's a certain amount of process that happens. So Nick, you're going to submit a restoration plan. I think to the commission, it's probably beneficial if coastal engineering comes to that um, enforcement continued enforcement hearing. Mm -hmm. There's a fair amount okay. of easement easement issues on this lot, so yep. and they've done their research for that. So um, to have uh, both parties involved, I think would be beneficial. Um, and also, okay. Nick, so you know, the commission has the right to to request any sort of changes to the restoration that you've proposed. So no work oh, is yeah. allowed. Oh, no, I know that, but okay. yeah, we're just working through the, the first iteration, first draft at the moment. And once I get his input and make sure that he's um, okay with me submitting it or for me to give it to Coastal to submit, um, hopefully by the next hearing we'll be before you and I'll get, a, I'll get in touch with um, Roger McNevich over at Coastal, who I believe is the one uh, working on this project. Um, and I will uh, figure out if he's under contract to come to the hearing or not. And if not, I'll see if I can get him to come. Okay. Do we want to try to schedule that then for the, the 22nd, Callie? I think it's probably a good yeah. idea. Since I would prefer thinking. that. That would be better than what we were thinking about before. July okay. 5th. And would you be looking for the um, submittal to be on or before the 15th so that you have one week with it then? Yes. I, okay. I think it's, I think at this point, Nick, if, if you can't, I mean, the commission needs at least a week to review, okay. to review this, given the extent of the paper filings for this project. Gotcha. And, and Nick, it's really important now that we're in this situation with um, remote working um, employees and also remote commissioners that we receive it in, in paper, but more importantly and more immediately, a PDF copy to be emailed to me. Okay. Um, my question would be, how do I get hard copies to you? 
There's a um, guidance on our town website and also there's okay. a drop box outside of town, the town annex building. Okay, and just like regular, you know, multiple copies of everything and um, just like normal. Yep, yeah. yep. Okay. Yep. There's All a right. box there. You'll see I it. Will, you can just uh, pop it in there and. Um, okay, I will work towards um, getting you something before or by the 15th so that you have at least a week with it. Okay. So do we then have, does anybody else have, any commissioners have any questions or comments? All right, we will proceed and hopefully get this finally addressed at the next hearing on the 22nd. So is there a motion to continue to April 22nd? Commissioner Holt moves to continue to April 22nd. Okay, thank you, a second? Mr. Del Vecchio, second. Thank you. Roll call vote to continue this to the 22nd of April. Ms. Holt? Aye. Hits? Joe? I think uh -oh. he had. He had he's, he, he's muted, but he should be hearing us. This happened last time with his. With his we'll come back. Uh, Mr. Rawls? Aye. Del Vecchio? Aye. Clark? Aye. Chair says aye. Joe, are you back with us? I think aye. maybe he was trying to call in. Um, so. All right. So the vote is one, two, three, four, five, with one not voting. Five zero one. All right. Callie, we'll go move on to the next uh, continued okay. hearing. Amendment um, amendments to orders of conditions 190 Stage Island Road. Deborah A. Phillips, 2001 Revocable Trust, is the owner. Deborah A. and Daniel D. Phillips Jr. are the trustees. SE 103399, Phase One of the amendment process. Let me just fix the Hello, it's Bob Perry here. Okay, Bob, can you for a moment? Uh, two got two devices going, so we'll turn one off. Okay. Thank you. There you go. Um, request to amend an existing order of conditions under SE 103399 to include the proposed extension of a fiber okay. roll array assessors map 13A1 parcel D150. Okay. Thank you, Callie. So this is familiar to everybody. Um, this is a the first phase of a request to amend the order of conditions that we just issued. Um, Callie, do you have the the filing that uh, came in with this request to show yes. the location of the extension? Let me go ahead and put that up. Yep. Um, okay, so this is, it's actually a letter from Bob Perry, um, which is here. And it's a request to proceed with the amended order of conditions for a minor project change, the winter weather caused for a minor shift in the erosion extent, and the applicant is seeking to extend the fiber rolls to the north approximately 25 feet further. The roll configuration will be lower in elevation over the 25 feet. The work will be incidental to the currently approved project and would be done concurrently. Should the commission authorize us to proceed with an amendment, we'll provide a revised plan and detail a request to abutters. And then this was the actual plan that was submitted. Okay, thank you. Mr. Perry, would you? Hi, good morning. Thank good you. Morning. For, thank you for all of your efforts here. I know how incredible it is. Um, I have been making visits to the site and we've had some weather. So the um, bank instability, as we mentioned, was um, not by, as far as we can tell, by, by the activity there, but just the undercutting until the beach deposit really rises up and gets vegetated has broken out. So the owner uh, appealed to us to file with you for this extension. My last visit there um, indicated to me that 25 feet should be 35 feet. Uh, and that's um, so that I would want to make that change. Um, they haven't gotten the rolls to that point. So there the there is no uh, collateral or reflected damage here. It's just that the undercutting has per, uh, persisted. 
And so a revised plan uh, coming to you for an amended order would be for a, a 35 foot additional length, and it would be a lower profile than what was uh, originally approved because it's a slightly different area. There's no need to have that height, but it is completely the same and consistent work with the work that's been done there. And, and this, that, okay, sorry, go ahead. That's, that's the summary. No, thank you. Thank you for that. I'm just remember, this is a phase one of the request. So we're, lim we're just looking at whether this is um, to be considered as a, a, an extension of an existing order. This is contiguous to the existing fiber roll, correct? It is. And, and extends it 35 feet to the north. Yes. Okay. Anybody have uh, questions as to the scope of this within the existing order? Uh, Bob Rawls, did, I assume that nothing needs to be cut on the upland area in order for this to be put in? No, it's all at the very bottom where it's already a little collapsed, yeah. Uh, Commissioner Holt, um, is there additional um, uh, beach nourishment or, or sand to be uh, needed? Well, there, there would be. That um, sand uh, has been used uh, for uh, protection and uh, there would be a, a layer of sand uh, at this work location. Uh, there already is, actually, uh, it, because of the access that comes near it. So, yeah, that, there'd be additional nourishment. You might say uh, five or ten cubic yards would, would wind up on the beach there. But you'd have that, you'd have that specifically? Yes, available. that okay. really uh, incidental to the cover that would be on the rolls themselves. Okay. Anything else? This is uh, Joe Kitts. Hey, Bob. Um, I was out there yesterday, and are you sure 35 feet is going to take care of the issue? It kind of looks a little tenuous on that north end. Well, it does. There, there isn't a house there. The, our original intent was to arrest what was critical to the house. And when you walk along there, you can get the feeling you're, you're under another property when you're on the north end of this of this property um I, I would i would suggest that uh, 40 feet would be a maximum but we measured it together with the crew and we came up with 35 of uh, 40 is an even uh increment of fiber logs and 40 would be perfectly fine with us we just didn't want to overstep and and let me add that there will be some bank erosion there there, uh, I don't think it's unnatural necessarily uh, that bank erosion that occurs at the north, because the beach is significantly higher there, it, it may behave in a manner that will nourish that area, naturally feed it, and it will grow in. And we might get bank stability in, in some of that area there. I, I can't predict it, but 40 feet would be a maximum, in my opinion. Yeah, the only reason I ask is that um, I w my first visit out there, the homeowner said that he owned that property up there anyway. So I was just wondering whether it'd take care of the issue. Well, it, it, it would be great. I just it's up to the commission as to how far we can go. For example, a permit to extend significantly longer does not necessarily mean he would install it at the outset. It would be a three year order. It's just that there would be a, a wise move to put in a certain length that would get the activity over with so the area could recover. And let me add that if we were going farther, I would not have significant height. It would be probably two rolls, possibly three rolls high at the most. But I, I you know, we have to make a judgment on this, but going to the lot line I felt was unnecessary. Um, it, it's one of these things where the fiber rolls are fairly slight as structures or fe features go. If the commission was interested, uh, we can propose a greater length. Commissioner Holt, uh, I'd like, like to make a statement that um, the purpose of, of permitting this is to protect a, a building, not to protect lawn or whatever, whatever's over there. So. Um, you know, just a reminder that we don't generally 
approve even fiber rolls when a, a structure isn't doesn't need them. Well, that that was our initial philosophy. Um, as you go north, you you know you have another house, but it's on a separate, different lot. Uh, working on that bank would have relationship to that house, but no one's no one's asked me to look after that. Okay, understood, uh, Bob. Thank you. Um, so when we move to phase two. Um, I would suggest that you you bring a proposal that is as extensive as you believe may be necessary and defensible, and um, we will consider that and come to a decision about how far it should be extended and whether or not we can leave that um, to be done in phases, perhaps, so that if it needed to be extended, that you wouldn't have to keep coming back for further amendments. But keep that in mind as you prepare your request. Yes, that I, something I, that is flexible would be would probably work best. I I think that's and given what we've just talked about. That's fine with me, and okay. we will we'll be back down there taking a look. Okay, Mr. Del Vecchio here. Yep. Is there anything going to be planted above the fiber rolls, or, or is this uh, enough existing vegetation so you know to eliminate uh, erosion? There's a fair amount of vegetation there. Uh, every effort has been made to salvage those clumps that slid down and plump, plump, plump them back up on top. And I'm quite certain that there will be the need to plant beach grass and other grasses, not necessarily beach grass, but native plugs uh, above it almost everywhere where there's a need. So yes, there will be some planting there. No question about it, but it's a, the upper bank is, is in pretty good shape there. Uh, Teresa Sprague is here from Blue Flats Design. If I could just speak to that quickly. Yep, sure, go ahead. So we are um, planting beach grass over the fiber rolls as they're being installed. Um, if anybody has been down at the site, they may have seen that. We are also seeding and blanketing. So the area above the fiber rolls will be re-blanketed. We're in the process of doing that right now. The area has been entirely seeded and will be re-blanketed. And then we will indeed be planting into the area above the fiber rolls where we filled in the scarf. Okay. Thank you for that. Hi, Teresa. <laughs> Hi, Bob. <laughs> uh, anybody else? Questions, comments? Okay, is there a motion to approve the request, the, first, the phase one request for an amendment? Uh, Commissioner Holt um, moves phase one approval. Thank you. Is there a second? This is Kitts. Second. Thank you. Roll call vote to approve the request. Uh, Ms. Holt? Aye. Kitts? Aye. Rawls? Aye. Del Vecchio. Aye. Clark. Aye. Chair votes aye. It's unanimous. We'll uh, look forward to uh, reviewing this when we get to that, when the materials are submitted and it's scheduled. I thank you very much, and um, all of you, please take care, and we'll look forward to seeing you soon. Same to you, Bob. Thank you. Um, at this point, we are exactly, how about that? It is 1030. Um, and I'm going to call a 10 minute break so we can get our eyes off our screens for a few minutes and stretch our legs and uh, before we move on to the remaining uh, notices of intent. So with that, I'll see everyone in 10 minutes.
You're on. All right, thank you. All right, we're back. And moving on now to the uh, continued notices of intent. So Callie, can you read the first one, please? Sure. Uh, parcel W53, Widow Road, Sears Point Development is the applicant. QBJKL LLC is the owner. SE 10-3365, proposed construction of house, guest house, pool, and pool house. At parcel W53 Widow Road, assessor's map 14K, parcel W53, applicant has asked to withdraw the application without prejudice. Okay. Do we have, um, do we need to read anything or um, we don't need anybody from the applicant to, they submitted a written with request for withdrawal, correct? They did, yeah, okay. and we, um, we put that I put that on the town website and you guys have it. So we just yep. need to take a vote to withdraw without prejudice. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the request for withdrawal without Commissioner prejudice? Commissioner Holt, so moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Commissioner Kitts, second. Thank you. Roll call vote to approve the request. Uh, Commissioner Holt? Aye. Kitts? Aye. Rawls? Aye. Delvecchio? Aye. Clark? Aye. Chair votes aye, unanimous approval for the request. Okay, I'll go on to the next one. Yep. Uh, 66 Rush Drive, Antius Realty Group, SE 103406, proposed landscaping and site restoration and naturalization at 66 Rush Drive, assessor's map 12M, parcel B6. Okay. Uh, good morning, Kelly. Teresa Sprague, Blue Flex Design, here on behalf of the Beinecke family for 66 Rush Drive. I'm just going to quickly, if I may, um, go through the changes the commission asked us to make or additional information they asked for and update you on each of those bullet point items. Okay. So this should go quickly. Um, we were asked to... Uh, Teresa, I'd hold like... on. Teresa, hold on. Can you let me... Um, I need to share the screen first. Okay. What's wow. the best plan for her to put it up there, Teresa? The revised um, planting plan? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Give me, give me like uh, five seconds. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. We're away. We're fine. I need to zoom in. Okay, I'm I'm all set as far as um, sharing. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so the first um, thing that was brought up was regarding um, the above ground septic. There's a manhole cover, or what what was presumed to be a septic. Um, there's a manhole cover um, in the northeast. You can see just on the screen, there's an arrow pointing to it, I believe, down the pathway. Mm -hmm. uh, what we've discovered is that that was an old cistern for water collection and has been long abandoned. Okay. So there's nothing in there. There's nothing being used. It was only used for water catchment. Okay. Okay. Next, we were asked to label the pitch pines, the oaks, and the cherries um, in our legend. Um, which has been added to the plan on the bottom left-hand corner. Okay. So you can see the cedar, the um, oak, the pitch pines, and the cherries. Um, next, we were asked to add the existing brick um, around the large pine. Um, yep, exactly, on the northeast side of the house. That has been added. We were asked to add a dimension on the path around the planting island. You can see that there. So there's nine feet to that and then 10 feet to the deck just to the north of that. We were asked to diversify plant sizes. We've done that. So we've added a number of different, you know, between one and three gallon size of plants so that they're growing in at different rates. Um, we asked for a quantity for um, the filling for the greeting um, for the patio on the south side of the house. That's approximately two cubic yards has been added to that label. Um, we were asked to submit the Ryder and Wilcox plan with the areas that were marked for restoration and no mowing on the site plan, and that has been submitted. I think Callie just had that up a minute ago. Yeah, let me, let me go up there. It's, it's this area here. And to the north, um, yeah, west. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Um, we were asked to include information about the previous Wilkinson design plans. I submitted 
did um, copies. I went into the conservation file and of course their large plans. I photographed them um, and submitted some of the photographs um, for the old Wilkinson plan. Nothing that was proposed in that plan is in an area that we're currently proposing. That was all um, bank stabilization work that was proposed, I think back in 2010 or 2011. I do have that, I can quickly tell you. Yeah, Teresa, we didn't receive that. Can you um, can you just send that along again? I can, okay. yes. Um, so I can tell you these Wilkinson plans were dated, um, I'm sorry, April 2012, and they were all showing um, restoration invasive species management and restoration on the coastal bank only. So I will resend those. I have photographs right here in front of me. They're, they're just photographs of the plans you have in your files. Um, in addition to that, let me see. Um, we were asked to consider um, an area of additional planting outside of the currently proposed. There was some concern um, to the north um, of the area that we're showing. You can see we've added a bunch of bayberry. There are a few shrub honeysuckle there. Um, there's also a plan note right above where it says lot six area to mean high water 63,002 square feet. Yep, if you look just above that, um, it's just off screen. Um, we're, we've made a note to plant a cluster of bayberry to increase the shrub cover um, close to the bank. The area is currently stable. There's ample ground cover. That area is completely vegetated. Um, but I believe one of the commissioners brought up some concerns about some potential or, or there some potential for future erosion. Um, there are a few just random shrub honeysuckle that we'll be selectively removing from that area. And anywhere that those shrub honeysuckle are removed, we will plant with bayberry. Um, but that area is actually really stable. So I, I it's, um, and it's very well vegetated. And that's the, uh, those are the changes we were asked to make. So that's what we have to present. Okay, thank you very much. Um... I'm just, in, I checked off my list as we're going along. Does anybody else um, have anything that was outstanding from the last hearing that was not addressed? Okay, does anybody have questions or comments on this revised plan? Okay, is there anybody else, uh, a member of the public or a participant on the call who would like to make a comment or ask a question about this? All right, are we ready then to say we're satisfied with everything that's been submitted and close the hearing? Yeah, Commissioner Holt moves, uh, we close the hearing. Okay, thank you, is there a second? Commissioner Kitts, second. Okay, roll call to close, Commissioner Holt. Aye. Kitts. Aye. Rawls. Aye. Delvecchio. Aye. Clark. Aye. Chair votes aye. It's unanimous to close. Is there a motion to continue this to the April 15th work session for review and approval of a order of conditions? Uh, Commissioner Holt, so moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Kitts, second. Thank you. Uh, roll call vote to continue to the April 15th work session. Uh, Commissioner Holt. Aye. Kitts. Aye. Rawls. Aye. Delvecchio. Aye. Clark. Aye. Chair votes aye. It's unanimous to continue it to April 15th work session. All right. Thank you very much, Teresa. All right, Callie, ready to move on? Sure. Uh, Notices of intent, parcel S19A, Meadowview Road, uh, Philip A. Kristoff Trust. Philip Kristoff Trustee is the owner and David Kristoff is the applicant. SE103400, proposed construction of a dwelling at parcel S19A, Meadowview Road, parcels map 10D, parcel S19A. Okay, thank you. So on this one, our last hearing was way back January 19th. Um, we have received supplementary materials, a revised planting plan. Um, is there, is Emma? Okay. Yes, this is Emma Boutour with Blue Flax Design. Hello, hold on a second and Callie will, um, do we wanna review the revised planting plan if she pulls that up? 
Yes, I can review the changes that we made. Thank okay, you. Okay, I'll, I'll pull that up. Hold, give me yep. one second. Yep. Emma, is it this one you want to do you want to refer to or is it this yes. one? Uh, no, the the first one. The revised planting plan. Okay. Yep. Perfect. Okay, okay. okay, so um, the first change that we made was to remove the stepping stones and the uh, patio from the 50 foot buffer to the coastal bank. Um, we also removed the proposed view window. Um, if the properties would like, the property owner would like to establish a view window um, by doing some very minor pruning, they'll request to establish it after the house has been constructed. Um, so we made that change after uh, we did the on-site meeting with all the commissioners. Um, we changed the symbol for the bayberry shrub to eliminate any previous confusion about um, whether those were the symbol for tree removal. So that's been changed. And we clarified that the number of proposed trees to be removed is 17. It was actually listed on the previous plan notes, but it was um, written in a way that was confusing. So um, of the 17 trees being removed, there are seven Seven of those trees are smaller size, three to four inch DBH. So I just wanted to make a note of that. And um, otherwise the planting plan and the vegetation management pro protocol will remain the same. Okay, thank you. Okay. And I think I noticed on the, um, the revised planting plan that you added the explanations for some of the tree removal that was asked for some were in the too, too close to the house some are in the driveway area yep so all the trees that are being removed are only being removed for the construction of the driveway and the grading associated with construction of the house okay and that's now indicated all right um questions or comments from the commission anything that was not that you were looking for that was not provided No comments, no questions. Callie, do you have anything? I just I just wanted to make sure um, I'm just going back to the site plan. I just want to before we move any further, I just want to make sure we're all good with um, with the site plan and what David Clark had submitted for his drainage calculations. Mm -hmm. Yep. OK. Yep. Mr. Del Vecchio here. Yes, Bob. I have a question about some debris uh, along the stairs, uh, the steps along the uh, coastal bank. I know there was some old fencing and some other debris. I was just wondering if that would be removed uh, upon you know, construction and uh, landscaping of the area. Yes, so a portion of the stairs is off of the the property so the property line cuts through the center of those if you're talking about the in-ground steps on the south side so every all the debris that's on this property will absolutely be removed but not you have no authority to remove the debris below the property line correct correct okay, okay thank you anybody else questions or comments Anybody else on the call have any questions or comments? Okay, is there a motion to close this? Yeah, uh, Commissioner Holt moves to close the hearing. Thank you. Is there a second? Good second. Okay. Thank you. Roll call for the motion to close. Commissioner Holt? Aye. Kitts? Aye. Rawls? Aye. Del Vecchio? Aye. Clark? Aye. Chair votes aye. Unanimous to close. Is there a motion to continue this to the April 15th work session? Commissioner Holt, so moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Kitts, second. Thank you. Roll call vote for continuance to April 15th to the work session. Commissioner Holt? Aye. Kitts? Aye. 
Rawls. Aye. Del Vecchio. Aye. Lark. I have to abstain and precedes my appointment. Okay. And chair votes aye, so it's five zero one. Motion passes. We will continue this to the April 15th work session. Thank you, Emma. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay, I'll go ahead with the next um, agenda item. Yep. 889 Orleans Road, Riders Cove Realty Trust, Nancy Borders Trustee, SE 103396, proposed reopening of hearing after re-advertisement for the proposed demolition of existing dwelling, proposed construction of new dwelling with an addition on a new FEMA compli compliant foundation at 889 Orleans Road. Thank you. All right, when we last uh, considered this back on February 26th, uh, since then we've received supplementary materials, a revised mitigation plan. Um, Callie, do you want to uh, pull up? Sure. What we have for that. And is there, is somebody on the call to address questions on this? Uh, David Clark is on the line. Okay, hi David. Um, all right, can you, do you have a, can you quickly review the changes on the plan from this February 26th hearing? Um, yes, uh, so uh, the commission had problems with the mitigation along the easterly line and felt it was more appropriate to put all the mitigation down uh, to the south side of the property adjacent to um, the BVW line. So that's what Phil has done. It shifted everything to the south. Okay, Callie, can you, yeah, scroll, pull it up a little bit? Yeah, it's underneath my, there we go. Okay, so that is all one contiguous mitigation zone. And what is the change in the total square footage with, with that shift? Um, I, I don't have that number in front of me. Okay. Um, Phil might be on the line, I don't know. Yeah, yeah he is, Do you Phil. have me, you have there me here? Hi, hi, Phil. There you go. All right, uh, I can try to check on the old plan quickly. Um, can I can I interject um, really quickly? Yeah. Is it possible maybe in the interest of time for David and or Phil Cheney to just update their their numbers and just send it to me electronically? Or do you want to yeah, I mean, you want them to I mean, calculate could, it now? If 3055 was the original square footage. Okay. Uh, and currently we're at, um, uh, I can't, I can't see it on your plan there, but. Oh, there, that's right underneath the, the I see total area, right. but it get and it stops, it's cut off. Right, 3035. Yeah. Yeah. 3035, okay. Yep. Got it. I just need that for the, we need that for the findings. Sure. Okay. And so is it possible to submit a higher quality plan um, as a PDF. This is a very blurry plan. Really? Uh, like if I zoom in on it, it's it's hard to read. Yeah, it was hard to read. If you scroll over to the plant list is where I, I bumped up into the the resolution issues. Yeah. yeah. I was, I can't, uh, I can't read it that. Was a, it's a standard PDF. I don't know huh. if it was transmitted in a a different um, level, but I can certainly resend it. Can you send it to me directly? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that'll help. I can do that. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Janet, I have a question when the commission is done with their okay. questioning. All right, so let's open it up to questions or comments from commissioners. Hi, this is Commissioner Clark. Um, did I hear that you're going to have a uh, FEMA compliant uh, construction plan? Yeah, this is, Bill like Riley. yeah this is Bill Riley. The answer to that is yes. Thank you. Other questions, other comments? Okay. All right, Callie. Still Vecchio here. Oh, wait. Sorry. Yes, Bob. Sorry about that. 
Nope, um, uh, we were talking about drainage uh, from the uh, from Route 28 there. Has that been resolved or is that going to be an issue or is that going to be something that's going to be done in the future? How is that? How does that stand? Um, we David Clark here. Um, we, we have not contacted Mass Highway. Um, so uh, the house will be elevated above the floodplain, which is several feet above the level of the water in the wetland so it, it, it'll have no impact on the on the structure and the driveway is significantly higher in elevation so really it doesn't impact the project at all okay anything else bob no that's it thank you okay thank you callie yeah i had two questions this is callie for uh, phil cheney if he's still on the line. Um, one of them is in the previous mitigation plan, if you can follow my cursor here on the plan that's up, there used to be mitigation plantings here, which um, you've transitioned as the commission had asked for it to go here. I was wondering, because I'm having trouble, the plan is pretty blurry. I'm having, what is going to be going in this clouded area here as it's demarcated on your plan? Yes, Phil Cheney here still, and uh, that is just be the existing vegetation that's there now. Okay, and my last question is further up towards the part of the property that's near the road, and there's um, a line of existing privet here, and then there's um, proposed plantings of, I think it was uh, eastern red cedar, but again, it's hard to read on the plan. Um, my questions are, what species of privet is this? Is this California privet or? I believe that's California privet. It's uh, it's typical for the area, yes. And those okay. are red cedars going in. Okay, and do you, do you in your experience as, as um, a landscape architect, do you envision that the, while the California privet, it's debatable um, amongst certain groups of whether the invasive quality of that California privet um, some people believe it is invasive. Some people do not. Do you believe that it'll have a negative impact on those eastern red cedars? Yeah, it's definitely not going to impact the cedars. Uh, maybe you know, in the you know 15-year range, they might be competing some. But uh, in that case, you'll just have a uh, there'll be a melding of the two. Okay, that's it for me. Okay. Uh, any anybody else? Any other questions or comments? Anybody, uh, members of the public or other participants? Uh, uh, this is Commissioner Holt. I uh -huh. didn't realize I was off. Um, when will the plantings take place? This is Bill Riley. Uh, we haven't discussed the schedule yet. Uh, presumably, uh, Probably after the after the uh, building is built. Uh, do you, is that going to happen um, this year, or is this a 2021 project? Uh, this is a. I know the the Bordes, uh would like to get going on it as soon as as soon as they can. We already have ZBA approval. We're just uh, waiting for the order of conditions. Because it it, it, look, it appears to me that the area where most of the mitigation is proposed uh, could be done while the house or even before the house is constructed. It doesn't appear to me that the there's any conflict that it would interfere rather with the uh, building of the dwelling. The uh, well, I'll talk to the Bordes, but um, it's going to be a construction site and. Uh, I think uh, out of an abundance of caution, the, the Bourdais would like to make sure that uh, all the machinery is off the site before they start uh, doing the, the planting. Okay, so it would be the first growing season after the, um, I guess, the growing Yeah, next, next spring or, or late fall if that's a growing season, you know. Yeah, okay, thank you. All right, anybody else? 
Okay, is there a motion then to close this hearing? Commissioner Holt, move to close. Thank you, second. Kitts, second. Thank you, roll call to vote to close. Commissioner Holt. Aye. Kitts. Aye. Rawls. Aye. Alvecchio. Aye. Clark. Aye. Chair votes aye, unanimous to close. Is there a motion to continue this to the April 15th work session for the order of conditions? Commissioner Holt, so moved. Thank you, second. Kitts, second. Thank you, roll call to continue to the April 15th session. Commissioner Holt. Aye. Kitts. Aye. Rawls. Aye. Aye. Alvecchio. Aye. Clark. Aye. Chair votes aye. Let's move to continue to April 15th work session. All right, thank you all for that. Okay, uh, the next order of business is 19 Forest Bluffs Road. Um, Haddad Family Trust is the owner, Stephen and Maureen Haddad trustees, SC 103401. Proposed land management to remove invasive species and restore native plant communities on a coastal bank at 19 Forest Bluffs Road, Assessors Map 3A, Parcel D1. All right, thank you, Kelly. Um, and I do believe Nick Crawford is still on the line. Yep, I I'm still here. All right, thank you, Nick. We'll come to you in a moment. Let me just. Uh... And I think Stephanie Sequin is also, was she, sorry, was she affiliated with this project? She was, but I wasn't, I'm not sure if she was intending on speaking today, so uh, I'm not sure. Okay. okay. She's on the line if we, if we need her for anything. All right, just to tee this up, the last hearing was uh, February 12th, um, and then it went to a work session, um, at which point the commission had further conversation about what was and was not submitted, um, and the changes that had been made to the uh, restoration plan. We had asked for uh, identification of all trees to be that are selected to be removed, with uh, specifically looking for the identification of the trees to the west side of the existing staircase, where the restoration plan refers only to remove trees. And to, we needed that figure to calculate um, proposed mitigation. And we had a discussion about removal of trees under our mitigation policy requires a one-to-one. -one. Um, we had asked at an earlier session to include a view window, which was included. Uh, and upon reviewing that, the commission determined that it was impossible to say at this point um, whether that view window was acceptable and reasonable or excessive, and so um, asked that it be removed from the plan and that the view window as is to be approved once the work is, is completed and then it can be marked in the field. Um, so we asked for the, a revised plan to remove that. Um, the the conversation, and I know, Nick, that you saw that uh, Callie, e there was an email exchange between you and Callie, and you watched the tape. Yep. But just to, just to review, it was the concern of the commission was um, in, two, in two main focus areas. One is the section to the west side of the stairs, where mm -hmm. the proposed vegetation removal is aimed at uh, oak and black cherry trees that had been um, that mismanaged over years um, and were going to be replaced by shrubs. There was a lot of concern expressed um, about two issues concerning that. One is what that removal of so much vegetation will do to the stability of a, a rather steep coastal bank. And second is they are a number of trees, six plus a, an unknown other number of trees, um, and that whether or not the commission would, would want to, to adhere to its policy of requiring one-to-one -one mm -hmm. tree replacement there. Um, and the second part was a, a reluctance on the part of the commission to go too far down the road with this plan when the existing obligations under the two still open orders of condition have not yet been satisfied. And um, we need to, to talk about whether um, 
a better approach is to phase this work in, assuming it gets approved, um, so that the mitigation, uh, full compliance with the existing <clears throat> mitigation requirements is met before further work is undertaken. Um, so with that, that's the, the catch up <laughs> uh, summary. And I'll let you respond to, to that, Nick. Okay. So, um, yeah, I wasn't at the last work session. Um, I didn't know that we could, I thought that's where draft orders of conditions would have been drawn up. So I didn't think that I needed to attend that. Um, but, and I wasn't sure that, I, I didn't know that you could ask, deliberate more um, yeah. in a work yeah. session. Yeah, so so it's a it's a slightly different take on the way the process used to work. As long as the hearing okay. is still open and we haven't taken a vote and approved a closure of the hearing, then there then we are still in deliberation and can still take further um, information into the record until that closure happens. Um, we okay, have well, I won't yeah, it used to be uh, done but first, now it's being done at the work I'll, session. I'll, okay, I know that for the future now, so yep. that's good. Okay. Um, let's see here. Um, all right, so yes, I added the amount of trees to be removed around the staircase on the plan, um, plain as day, so that you don't even have to count. I removed the um, uh, view window lines um, as I was asked to. Um, I think that as far as we're concerned for the stability of the bank on the west side of the staircase, um, I don't have any immediate concerns with the stability of that bank after vegetation removal, um, as all the existing root systems will remain in place um, and there won't be any uh, disturbance of the soil, so to speak, except for uh, foot traffic from us being on the bank itself. Um, as far as the area, the previous mitigation areas are concerned, um, I have, uh, I did put that on the planting plan. Um, it's a total of 28 shrubs, uh, small shrubs mostly, and most of them are uh, roses um, that are, that need to be installed in order to get a certificate of compliance on the previous orders of conditions. Um, it would be my opinion, um, and I think that any contractor would agree, is that if this work on the bank was to proceed, it would be ideal to wait on the plantings at the top of the bank so that we either don't install, install them and then have to take them out while we're doing the work or so that we don't trample them if we didn't take them out. Um, I wouldn't want that to happen, obviously. Um, so my recommendation, um, from an implementation standpoint would be to perform the land management and restoration work on the bank. Um, once that is complete, then the area on top of the bank can be can be planted and brought into compliance and not be in danger of being in the way of anything else in the future. Um, and I think, uh, was there something, oh, and then the issue of tree replacement. Um, so, um, you know, I think there are the potential for some areas um, if trees did want to be replaced down towards the bottom, or not bottom, but mid to bottom of the bank um, on the east side of the staircase. I think that um, planting trees up at the top or um, close to the top would defeat the overarching purpose of this restoration plan. Um, it's entirely voluntary and the currently the client as it is right now has obviously a very nice view and I think that it would be counterintuitive to do a voluntary restoration project and make a substantial um, a, a substantial monetary uh, contribution to restore this bank um, and result in a less desirable view in the end. Um, and I have been told that if that does become the case, that we would, in that instance, respectfully withdraw the application. And I really don't want to do that because I do believe it is a good project. I do believe that it is enhancing the entire resource area, not just a buffer zone, um, and will 
further protect that resource area um, upon further encroachment since the lower two thirds of the bank is relatively healthy and healthier towards the uh, the bottom of the bank. And the dune itself is also almost 100% native. And I would just hate for the upper invasive areas to start encroaching and creeping down the bank until we end up with a completely invasive property. So that's the, uh, that's what I'll say. And um, I'm open to any more uh, questions or comments. Thank you, Nick. Um, yep. Um, what is the date? I, I, I don't think I have the latest uh, restoration plan. Mine is dated February 5th. Um, this one is March 6th. Uh -huh. the last one that we brought over. Okay. Um, it may be that it's only... not yet electronically available to us. Okay. Well, I, if I may, the only difference between the plan that you were looking at last time versus the newest plan is the view lines aren't there. So it's, mm -hmm. those are gone. And there's a note right front and center in the middle of the page that says seven trees proposed for removal around existing house and staircase. Those were the only changes made um, past that work session. So if you add, so that, so we move trees has now been replaced to remove seven trees. So we right. add seven, so all eight. The trees were on there before, but you had to count them. So I yeah. just added a note that did that for you. So it's a total of 13. No, total of seven. Oh. Seven is the total. Six. Okay. Oh, sorry, I was muted. There's seven trees here, and there's a note on the plan. Do you guys see that? Oh, there it is. Okay. Yep. Seven so trees. Six that are on the coastal bank around the staircase, and one pitch pine that's just very close to the house. Okay. Okay, so that note on the left side of the staircase there, remove trees and replant bare areas with ground cover grasses and shrubs is not pointing to a specific area. It's for, the plan for that for whole well, stretch. It's pointing to the area of tree removal, but each tree has its own note to be removed. Okay. Um, so I guess it's kind of a, a duplicate. It's, it's okay. Redundant. That's what was causing some confusion because we thought that was in addition okay. to the trees identifying. I got okay. You. Okay. If I could just interject, so I yep. think one of the issues is that you guys can follow my cursor on the um, western side of the property by the stairs. There's a three DB, DBL oak up here. That's one. Mm -hmm. There's a four uh, inch oak. I think that's inch. It's hard to see. That's two. A cherry. That's three. Another oak. That's four. Another oak. That's five. And then another oak down here that's six and then it just says remove trees so is there only well, one says, tree that so you're going you, to be removing here yeah so if you like i said that note is redundant so if you add up the total number of trees that have removed to be removed next to them that will give you six plus the pitch pine that's next to the house that has a big x over it that will give you seven Okay, I think this I think this note that I'm pointing to though is what the commission had asked to be removed then. Okay, well just con consider it gone in a moot point. We can I can submit a revised plan that doesn't include it or it can be written in the order of conditions that that note is obsolete and doesn't mean anything. So I can do it either way. No, I, I think in I think the order of conditions should reflect a site plan that's accurate is would be my recommendation okay. to the commission. Yep. I would be fine with that. All right, so that's that issue. What is the, and I'm going to open it up to questions and comments um, from other commissioners in terms of reactions to that. To So the proposed mitigation for the removal of the seven trees, Nick, is remains the mitigation plants that have been specified. Is that correct? I'm, I'm sorry, say that one more time. I, I was getting a... Uh... The proposed the mitigation for the removal of the seven trees. Yeah, somebody needs to mute. Somebody's... Okay, that's better. Uh, we're picking it up anyway. Oh, it's a feedback that I'm getting from my voice. 
Hmm. Everybody check and make sure they've got everything muted there. It's better. Anyway, just trying to get to the question of the yep. mitigation that we've been talking about. Um, the yep. mitigation for the removal of the seven trees remains what exactly? The, it's hard. The, the mitigation itself is the restoration of the entire bank and the replanting and revegetation of the entire bank with the native plant community. Um, mm -hmm. Currently, we're proposing a total of um, 100, 164 shrubs um, to be replanted. Um, that's 23 to 1 for the trees. I think that um, considering that the tree will also, or I'm sorry, considering that the bank will still predominantly be canopy on the lower two thirds of the bank, um, I think that at least in my opinion, it's more than appropriate. I mean, 23 to 1 is a pretty decent ratio for vegetation replacement, even if it isn't tree for tree or caliper inch for caliper inch. Um, so that would be that would be my opinion. Reactions from other commissioners? Questions about that? About mitigation? Yeah, Mr. Holt. Mr. Holt, yeah. um, oh. it's, it's it's still not clear to me why why it's necessary to remove the six trees. That are along the uh, the existing stairway. Um, they are in very close proximity to the staircase. If you if you've been out to the site, I bet you I put money on the fact that none of those trees are above the height of three to four feet. So I mean, they're essentially just very short shrubs at this moment, and as they continue to grow, they will need to be pruned. Um, multiple times on an annual basis to keep them outside of the staircase. So that's, you know, I'm not really concerned about these trees growing up into the view with the exception of the one at the top. Um, it's more of a, um, it's more of a instance of a more appropriate plant due to the, the constraints of the area. Um, and I'd like to note also that just on the other side of that Western property line on the neighboring property, there are also, um, there are many, many trees, obviously, I didn't inventory there, but it's completely vegetated with a native can, well, I shouldn't say native, it's completely vegetated with a canopy to the western side of that property line as well. And I would think that it would be safe to assume that if there's something just over the, just over the property line, over the course of the project and into the future, the trees on the neighboring property will begin to show, um, will begin to extend their canopy over the property line. So what, what you have here right now is many, many, many juvenile immature trees that through natural selection over time by themselves would eliminate and thin themselves out. We are essentially doing, providing that, that natural service um, through the restoration by thinning them out. But you're, you're removing them, I mean, Thinning out is um, seems not to be the uh, the term I would use in in, in this regard. I, again, they provide they are providing um, you know habitat value and bank stability. I know you said you were going to leave leave the roots, but um, I guess I just don't understand why it's it's necessary to to remove the the six of them. Mm -hmm. So when you start with the, in forestry speak, if you start with a hundred trees per acre. You know, those trees will go grow bigger and be healthier typically as they thin out. And you might end up after 50 years with only five trees per acre um, after you've redistributed that growth potential for removing trees that would have naturally um, died on their own, so to speak. So uh, thinning is can be used multiple ways. It can be thinning the crown of a tree. It can be thinning an entire acre of woodland. So in this case, we are removing the trees first and foremost so that they don't annually need to be pruned back off the staircase continually and rot the staircase, frankly, because of the shade that they're going to provide eventually. And also we're giving the trees just on the other side of the property line. We're redistributing the growth potential 
and decreasing the amount of competition that these trees are going to experience. So, I mean, if, if it's a make or break thing, um, you know, I guess we don't have to remove all of them, um, but it will be a, um, a more than annual maintenance regime to keep them outside of the staircase. But with regard to that, I mean, um, because they're on the staircase, pruning them back is going to have no impact on, on the, um, on the stability of the bank, obviously, which, it, which has been a, uh, I guess, a reason for allowing such management or removal in an area where the only way to access the trees is to, um, you know, in, intrude into the, into the bank, which is not the case here. It's simply a matter of walking down the staircase with a, some clippers and pruning some branches as they grow. I mean, I, I, at this point, I would, um, if, if you can suggest an alternative that is a reasonable compromise to what we're proposing and what you would like to see, I'm happy to hear it, and um, we can well, we can do that. Well, I'm just, you know, one voice on the commission. I mean, there are, you know, right. others who who may feel that uh, this is fine as as you've um, defined it. Okay. Well, let's let's open that up. Go ahead, Bob. I get to yeah, hear. I, I mean, in in effect, it, it's always seemed to me that these trees are shrubs because they're not allowed to grow to trees. And in fact, I can accept the argument that they shouldn't or can't be allowed to grow to trees in the in those locations. So, I sort of view them as shrubs, which then leads to whether or not we need a one to one tree replacement. I mean, I think if, if, if you accept the fact that they're not really being treated as trees, then I can accept the fact that we don't need to replace trees. Anyway, that's just the way it has occurred to me. Okay, thank you. Anyone else like to speak to this point? I have a question, Nick, about um, yeah. the removal process that goes back to the question of the stability of the bank that I continue to to feel concern about um, in light of um, what we have seen over the last couple of years in terms of what happens when when a lot of the vegetation is removed. Yep. So they're they're flush cut and wiped. At what point do the root systems um, degrade and they're left um, in place, right? So they they're never the root systems are not removed. They'll just die in place. Correct. So it is partially dependent on species. Um, if it's a pitch pine, it will rot very quickly and go away. If it's a mm -hmm. cedar, it will stick around much longer as they are rot resistant. Mm -hmm. um, given that these are uh, cherries and oaks, I would say, you know, there's, there's going to be something there for a significant period of time. But after probably, you know, five, six years, I wouldn't doubt if you could um, go on the bank and start, you know, kicking the stumps and start breaking pieces loose. Um, it'll really, you know, they, they break down faster in shady, wet areas. Um, so it's just really hard to put a specific timeline on how long they take to um, decompose. But as far as the stability of the bank is concerned, in, in this particular location, I have no, no concern in the immediate or near-term future about stability of the bank as there is a um, healthy dune community at the toe of the bank um, that's over 50, that's basically 50 feet wide at its uh, narrowest point. Mm -hmm. So they have at the very least a 50-foot buffer before any um, reasonable storm activity would ever mm -hmm. make it to the bottom of the bank. Right. Um, what about a the top of the bank though coming off the property? I'm sorry, what? What about a susceptibility to erosion from the top? Yeah, so from the erosion from the top would be mainly in the form of runoff from mm -hmm. lawn or areas associated with the developed areas. Um, I don't see that as being an issue, considering there is virtually no ground cover at the moment. Us removing or us flush cutting and treating the trees will not change that fact. Um, and after we do remove or flush cut them and treat them, the area will be seeded and covered with erosion control blankets. So I would argue that um, immediately after the project was done, it would be 
I don't want to say more stable, but um, less prone to the erosion caused by runoff over the top of the bank. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think the, the bank would be able to hold up better after the blankets and native seed mix are installed than it would if it was left in its current state over a period of time. Janet, may I, may yeah, I make a go comment? Ahead. Go ahead, I'm, I'm contemplating that, that last comment. Um, and I apologize if, if various converse, the sound for me is sort of going in and out, um, but I, I think the commission needs to consider um, this idea of the fact that this is a restoration project, um, a voluntary restoration project. And previously there was a set of, there was a mitigation area for, that was actually mitigation for work that they had done in the resource area or, or buffer, whichever you're gonna refer to as state, state or local. Mm -hmm. um, and that, that mitigation area previously wasn't um, cared for. And so to be consistent for what this commission has been doing, um, like as an example with 43 Shattuck, is that you required them to fix the mitigation area before they were allowed to do additional work. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that the consistency of, of matters is, is important here. And I totally understand that that it's difficult to to do this restoration work and and plant at the top of the bank because all of that restoration work would essentially rip out um, rip out what was previously planted in that mitigation area. Right. But so how, I think how could that be how could that be scheduled so that you wouldn't end up so you get the mitigation done and it's in compliance and then it's damaged by the rest of the restoration going forward. I I guess that's up to the commission to decide of whether or not, I mean, the time to do that mitigation um, was when the impact to the resource area slash buffer zones took place. Um, not not now, um, because if that, if that had been well established and a little bit more hardy, I would imagine that that mitigation area could have been protected with some sort of silt fencing or, um, or something to kind of like trees are protected I, in Orleans during construction where they put, you know, those wooden planks around trees to protect them. So I think the commission needs to, or I'd like that you guys to consider um, reviewing this project in light of the fact that the mitigation area in a previous project wasn't, um, wasn't fully completed, nor was right. it in compliance. Right. I, I right. would like to add that I did talk to the client and originally, to the best of his knowledge, um, without literally being there to watch them do the work, he did install all mitigation plantings. Not all of them survived. So if you look at the plantings to bring previous mitigation into compliance on the, the plant schedule, um, you can see that um, 25 out of the 28 plants that are proposed or that need to go back in to bring the plan to bring the property into compliance are Carolina Rose. I would say I, it but seems to me as though one species basically died off there um, for whatever reason and a few others didn't make it as well but um, this is this is usually what happens with restoration projects we or mitigation we go do the mitigation or restoration we plant it and then we let the we perform maintenance and care for the area and then we replace the plants um, needed for compliance that may not have made it before we go for compliance mm -hmm. um, so that you're not replacing the same plants over and over again yeah and we have I mean we have provisions and orders to account for that but I think the other uh, other portion of this probably degraded mitigation area is that it's partially covered with grass with turf lawn. Um, right. Well, so I, I think that if, if if you were to stop mowing that area in, in and around the previous mitigation plantings, um, I haven't seen it during a growing season, but just based on what it looked like um, 
while I was there. Um, I think if you stop mowing it, some of the species in the grass mix, so to speak, that is, are in that area are native. So it would be a matter of stop mowing it and then selectively treat any species that we do not want coming back and then overseeding with species that we want there. Um, so I, I think either way, we always want grasses to be in there. Maybe not the ones that are there, but we want some form of vegetative ground cover that's going to prevent erosion and runoff over the crest of the bank. Okay. Commissioner Holt, I've got a yep. question then just make sure I understand. So if the mitigation had been planted and maintained as it should have been, are you saying that the only way to do the restoration work would be to remove all of those plantings? No, not necessarily. I mean, if we could maintain um, a six foot, six to eight foot wide access in an area to both the west and the east of the staircase, that will be that would be enough. I would just hate to plant things, you know, if three feet on center and not have any area to go through at all. Wait, so they could do the mitigation plantings first and then uh, begin the restoration work after that's installed. It's not impossible. I mean, it's less uh, less ideal, but it, it could be done. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Mr. Del Vecchio here. Yep. I have a question about erosion control at the toe of the bank. Is there going to be anything placed at the toe of the bank while the work is in progress? Uh, no. Well, at least as proposed, no, because the lower two thirds of the bank is what's going to be the least disturbed um, or the least, the least amount of work is involved in the lower two thirds of the bank, especially the lower third. So I don't think there's any uh, necessitation for um, doing any kind of erosion controls at the base of the bank. I mean, we can if you'd like, but I don't think it's necessary. How about at the base of where the work is, most of the work is going to be completed? Uh, yeah, we could certainly uh, put a row of bio waddles um, where the major at the lower extent of where the majority of the work is taking place. We could definitely do that. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, so at this point, um, I think the thing to do is to is for each of us to indicate um, what what our position is in terms of the approvability of this project, and if it's approvable, what we would want to put in in order of conditions to uh, make it approvable? Uh, Commissioner Holt? Yes. Um, I would have uh, suggested um, for my benefit and anyone else who would have wanted to join an onsite just to discuss in more details what's gonna go where, but uh, given the circumstances of the, uh, what we're dealing, dealing with, um, that, is pro that is not going to be, be possible. So I would like to go out again and look at the, um, if the trees are marked, the ones that are, are proposed, the seven that are proposed for removal, to see the um, the site, um, you know, one more one more time before I decide how where I stand on what aspects. I think okay. that's sensible. I mean, yeah. Nick, go ahead. I was just going to say I think this is including the work session. This is the third time we've done this and. Thus, there have been three prior chances to go out there. Um, I, I just don't understand. In all honesty, I just don't understand what the holdup on this particular project is as a, as a benefit as a whole. So that I'm just I'm just confused. Uh, well, I think one thing that happened today was further clarification of the tree removal, and I would imagine that maybe that's why Dee Dee would want to view the site to to look at based on the information from today. Is that right, Dee Dee? <laughs> yes, that's correct. <laughs> okay. I'm happy to meet anyone out there anytime that makes sense um, whenever this thing is over or before it's over or whatever. 
Um, just just let me know what you want to do because I can't move Nick, forward without trees, your blessing. Have you have you flagged the trees, the the seven trees? I have not, but you can't miss them. They're the only trees. But if they look like shrubs, are they are they distinguishable? Um, to me they are, but I could certainly flag them if. Uh, uh, that would be helpful to me. There's no, there's, there's no need to meet some to, for you to meet anybody there, if they're flagged. Right. For me, what I need to look at is just to, because I was, uh, what you have said has been um, interesting in terms of their proximity to existing canopy trees, um, and if I see that and can see the effect as possibly being um, positive in the longer term. Um, that might change my mind because otherwise I am I'm leaning toward not uh, approving, not being able to support the removal of those. But that might change. That might be a, a and that's frankly what's holding up my decision. Okay. I mean, are you not in support of the project as a whole or just that one no. piece? I don't. It's see. that piece. It's the piece to the west of the staircase that bothers me, both from a viewpoint of the bank, the, any kind of a risk to the bank. And from the viewpoint of it, how necessary it is to remove those, because they are functioning as maybe not as canopy trees, but they're functioning as habitat. They're functioning as for bank stability. They're functioning in any other number of ways. If removing them ultimately confers a net benefit on that section, then I would perhaps change my mind about that. Okay. This is uh, Joe Kitts. I would like to bring us back to what Callie said and consistency about our actions is very important to me. So if we're going to go, you know, visit the site, I would look at the previous um, job out there and kind of bring back some thoughts about that. Okay. Just for your information, we had we didn't do that installation and weren't in touch with the client when it was done. So, mm -hmm. I mean, the, the mitigation isn't anything special. Um, you know, it's. No, that's understood, like Nick. I don't think you need to worry about us, you know, coming down on you. But the point about consistency as far as the commission, commission's ruling is important. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we think that this can all be that we could those who want to go look at it? My inclination would be um, to start working on to an order of conditions that would, as as Joe and Callie have pointed out, require completion of the mitigation before any other work is completed. Um, I would, under normal circumstances, want to even see certificates of compliance issued, but. Um, given the, the situation we find ourselves in, um, that's probably not feasible, but at least having the work done and approved before the rest of the restoration work is done um, would be something that I would uh, be willing to, to support putting into an order. Um, and if I can go see those, the tree removal in the next couple of days, um, I can draft a couple different um, provisions respecting the, that section in the order, and we can go through them at a work session and decide. Okay. I don't think we I need will, to go uh, to another hearing. I think we can sort this out at a work session, what we will, and provide some options and go that way. All right, I will, uh, I'll get a hold of the, the property owner and make sure that it's okay if I go out there. And if it is, I will go, um, I will go flag the trees for you, and I will send Callie an email letting her know that it has been done. Appreciate that. Thank you. And also, yep. Yep. Uh, Nick, to remove the that note on the plan, that small yeah. note about the trees, the ambiguous number it. of trees. I'll get it out of there. Okay. Janet, this is Joe. I agree with your scenario there that, yes, if we visit it, we could work through the details that remain at a work session. Okay. I okay. Anybody else? Uh, well, just are, are you suggesting then, this is the Commissioner Holt, that uh, the hearing be closed and then we um, move forward at a work session? Can't close it. We'll have to wait until the work session to close it because we still have information to come in as we go visit the site and look at it. 
So my, I would ask then that we have someone make a motion to continue to the work session for further deliberation and perhaps action on a order of conditions. Commissioner Holt moves we continue to April, uh, April 15th. Yeah. Kits here, second. Thank you. Roll call on a motion to continue to April 15th. Commissioner Holt? Aye. Pitts? Aye. Walls? Aye. Del Vecchio? Aye. Clark? Is he there? I'm just looking. He's, he's on, but he's muted. I, Tom, can you hit star six to unmute? Which star six? Aye. There you go. Thank you very much. Chair votes aye. So it's unanimous. Um, it will be continued to the April 15th work session, and we will finish complete deliberations, then close, and then move forward with whatever the decision will be. And Nick, can you be in attendance at that meeting? Yeah, assuming you mean over, you mean through Zoom or whatnot. Uh, it'll be through this platform, but it'll be a work session yeah. on four fifteen. Yeah, that's yeah, that's fine. It's not a problem. three p.m. Great, thank you. Okay. Okay. That is it for the agenda for today. There are still a number of people who are here. I'm not sure why. Do you want to, should we ask if anyone's here? Yeah. For is, is there anybody here who has anything else um, that they wish to bring up? It could just be that they've walked away from their computers uh, and didn't uh, didn't disconnect. Commissioner Holt, uh, just wondering if we need to address the certificate of compliance that is on the agenda. I, I did reach out to the owner and she supplied a, a waiver. Um, so and requested that it just not um, remain in the queue during this whole COVID-19 process, um, but I did receive a waiver for that. Do we, so we, 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 need we have it scheduled yeah. for a certain date, Callie? She, she did agree to waiving it, um, not to a particular date certain, just until we had figured it out. Um, so I was Okay. going to reach out to her today and, and put it on the May 15th, May 13th. Um, okay. Meeting. Okay. Okay. That's all right. Then that's it. Is there a motion to adjourn? Uh, Commissioner Holt moves to adjourn. Kids second. Thank you. Roll call. <laughs> Commissioner Holt. Aye. Kids. Aye. Rawls. Aye. Salvecchio. Aye. Clark. Aye. Chair votes aye. It's unanimous adjournment. I move the the uh, note the hearing is closed and adjourned at eleven forty nine a.m. <laughs>